and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. Welcome everybody to uh, this week's XY Live. This week we're uh, we're really excited to have Brian Kenner from uh, Hunter Financial. Uh, he's an advisor and has built an amazing business around his client referrals. Uh, firstly, though, I just wanted to say thanks to uh, our friends at AIA for for supporting these sessions. Uh, that uh, helps us, you know, bring the, these things to you. So thanks very much. So Brian, welcome. Great to have thanks, you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. So, no, good, good, and uh, nailing the the technology for for some uh, people watching in, they might be thinking that, that Brian is uh, perhaps a little outside the the typical X Y uh, participant. <laughs> but uh, I caught up with Brian a few months back uh, for a coffee, and he was telling me about the things that he's doing in his business and. Uh, some of the numbers that he was throwing around was amazing. So, you know, I think uh, when it comes to advice these days, uh, people sometimes, you know, it's easy to get caught up in that technology and you're trying to, you know, do all these things differently and do different things in your business. But it's important to do the uh, the, the basics really well, the fundamentals as well. So um, today we, we're going to learn a bit about some of those basics. And I know for me, uh, referrals is something that, you know, we, we're really unstructured with and, and pretty poor at. So, uh, so I'm sure some, some great content uh, and, and some good tips for everyone. So, Brian, can you just tell us, first of all, just a little bit about your business so people know what it sort of looks like? Sure. So we've got a business in uh, Hunter Valley, so in Belmont, uh, south of Newcastle. We've got 18 staff, uh, turnover over 3 mil. Uh, there's a number of advisors. My business partner who owns the majority of the business is more like you guys, he's uh, 37. And uh, we also have an investor and I have a small share left in the business. And we deal with clients from uh, probably 30 to 35 years of age through to 85. Okay. So we, we, we don't believe in p picking a particular niche. Okay, and so what sort of work do you do with your clients? Yep, so it's holistic financial planning. So we include insurances, uh, risk assessment, estate planning, investments, superannuation. Uh, so the, the whole gambit. Okay, and so the business has been around for, is it 2007 or seven years? Uh, okay. No, it, it's been since, uh, so it's now 11 or 12 years old. Okay. And how many advisors? Uh, four, about to be five and a half. Okay. Due to the wait time, I'm sure we'll come to that yeah. in a sec. Uh, and, and how many clients do you, does your business look after? Um, we look after very well, about 600, but we've got about 1,000 on the book. Okay, great. And so uh, I'm ke really keen to talk about the, you know, the client refer referrals because some of these numbers, you know, when we caught up uh, a few months back and, and just chatting before are, are pretty amazing. Uh, you mentioned 78% of your clients will refer other clients yes. into the business. And uh, I know that these figures are still uh, being, being sort of finalized, but you noted that 90% or thereabouts of your new business is, is coming from client referrals. So can you just tell us a bit about that and, and how that all came about? Sure, um, it's definitely not luck. <laughs> so, and it's definitely not just because we give good service. So some years back we started a, a program where on every agenda of every meeting, uh, one of the last items is personal introductions. So we've stopped using the word referral and we use personal introductions. So uh, Ben, if you and I were at a pub together having a drink and Ray walked in, uh, you would say, Brian, let me introduce you to Ray. You wouldn't say, let me refer you to Ray. So, well, I hope you wouldn't. Um, so we've, we've shifted away from that and used personal introductions. And 
it it is on every agenda. So your first meeting with us, your second meeting, the third meeting, which is the plan presentation, um, the reviews, it's on every agenda. We do have some basic tools that we use. So uh, we give clients a sheet that they can fill out and put on um, you know, friends and family's names and contact details. The truth is probably uh, one in 50 people fill out the form. But we found that uh, when we reviewed and did our survey of our clients, and we do it every two years, so we're due, it, due to do it again next year, 71% of our clients were willing to refer. And therefore, in most firms, you would find that 20 or 25% actually referred. But 71% of our clients were willing to refer, and 78% actually referred. So the process of us constantly asking, and it's a gentle uh, introduction. So we use words like, uh, Ben, if you're happy with our service and we've done a great job for you, uh, you know people that we don't know, uh, is there any reason why you wouldn't be keen to personally introduce us to your friends and family? And most people go, no reason at all. Uh, well, look, we've got some tools here that may help you. Uh, but we'd we'd love to we love caring for people, and so we'd love to care for your friends and family. Um, and we'll actually be mentioning this uh, at every meeting because, quite frankly, this is how we've grown our business. We love dealing with people like you, and so people then refer. Uh, if we didn't have the constant reminders, then it just wouldn't happen because you get busy and you forget, um, and you you concentrate on servicing or delivering the implementation of the plan and you forget to ask. So it's a constant reminder for us and it's on every agenda. Okay. And so with, so when, when this conversation happens, how did the, is there a, a framework for, for when you would do it? So you have that, the, you know, those couple of sentences that you mentioned that you sounds like from in would be in the first meeting to, to sort of position. And is that, something do you do that you know where does it sort of fit in yep so it's it's the last item on every agenda so it doesn't matter what the meeting is um and so on the second meeting we would simply say now ben you remember in our first meeting we talked about personal introductions and you'll go yes most people at that point say look i haven't thought about it or i have thought about it and um i'm not sure what to do next or they say I've actually got a few people in mind. Uh, what's the best way for me to approach them? So if they haven't thought about it, we go, that's fine. Um, understand that we're all busy. Uh, we just mentioned to you, Ben, that we're going to uh, bring it up at every meeting. And so we don't want to let you down or let your friends and family down. So it's on our agenda. And uh, we'll mention it again uh, the next time we meet. Um, is that okay with you? To get their permission. And everyone says, yeah, sure. What, what would you say, Brian, for um, perhaps young advisors that uh, may be a bit, bit petrified to consistently ask their clients about this stuff? I know, you know, for myself, I, I'm really confident and happy with the work that I do for my clients, but there's still that little, little thing inside me that goes, geez, I don't want to be that guy that just asks and asks and asks. So, yeah. um, you know, perhaps that's just, just me. <clears throat> Ray, it's not just you, it's all of us, but it's the same issue that we have with setting our fees. It's the same issue we have with asking for personal introduction. It's the same issue that we have with raising our fees and, and acknowledging the value that we give to clients. It's in our own head. So once we conquer that in our own head and we see that people are happy and not offended and we use normal everyday language and it's not a hard sell, then people go, oh, that makes sense. Um, and then we go, oh. So it's like the first time that we, um, uh, some years back we shifted from a commission and a small fee for a plan to a total fee for service model. And when we first did a plan for 10,000, we we're all a bit nervous and uh, client goes, so I get all of that just for 10 grand a year. We go, yeah. Oh, that's great. And we're like, what were we nervous about? Yeah. Um, 
So now, you know, we're, as you grow, we've got uh, clients with a recurring revenue of 30 grand a year. Um, but it was in our head initially. And it's the same with asking for personal introductions. Yeah, look, I, I think I sort of feel the same way uh, as, as Ray on, on this, to be honest. Um, so it, I, I suppose it's very interesting to hear about that approach. Um, one thing, actually, I didn't mention before, just for the guys that are watching in, we are going to have some time for questions for Brian as well. So for anyone, anyone that's watching, um, feel free if you've got any questions or you know issues, anything that you want to ask Brian, you can type it into the chat box just on the right-hand side here. Uh, and we'll and we'll get to them through the session as well. So, so Brian, with the with the, you know how you ask, one of the things you mentioned uh, is about, and I've heard this this sort of framing of sentences quite a lot that they say that you say, uh, you know, if we do a good job and we do all these th these things for you, is there any reason why you wouldn't refer? To me, that feels a bit weird you know i feel a bit weird about that is that do you think that particular framing is important because I, I i hear that a lot for different uh elements of the, the sales process and i fully acknowledge that we all work in sales like i get that that's just you know you're helping people uh, discover a need and then solve the problem but is it you know are there variants on that that you use or do you is that line yeah. important and uh, no that's one of them so we do have scripts and we encourage our advisors to stick to the scripts but to make them their own so one of the ways that that is done by our team is um i've loved helping you and it was great to meet you and by the way uh, ben i wouldn't have met you unless ray had introduced us so it sort of makes sense that uh you would interested introduce us to your friends and family doesn't it yeah and most people go yep so because we've been introduced, um, you know people that we don't know and we'd love to help them. I'm, I'm keen, Brian, to um, maybe explore if, you, if there's been any pushback from, from clients. I know for me personally, I'm probably not that keen on talking to my, my friends about my personal finances and, and the like. Um, you know, is that, is that something that you've come across with clients said, yeah, look, I really, really appreciate it, but to be honest, I, I prefer not to, not to talk. It's a bit taboo to talk to my mates about that. I prefer just to, you know, talk about the footy team, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, a couple of people have therefore said, no, we're, we're never going to introduce it to anybody. Um, that's fine. Uh, they can be in that 10% because we believe that now our numbers will show when we survey next year that 90% of our clients are introducing friends and family. Uh, the other aspect to that, Ray, is we would then uh, say to them, look, you need to understand that as we mentioned in our first couple of meetings, everything that you tell us is strictly confidential. And same yeah. with your friends, exactly the same with your friends. So we don't want you to tell them what advice you've got or what you're dealing with or anything like that. We simply need you to say, we've found these people trustworthy. Um, they're actually becoming good friends. And I think you should go and talk to them. Um, one of the other leads that we use is we remind people that uh, their first two appointments are at our cost. Um, and so the first appointment is a discovery meeting. And that allows us to discover whether we're going to take you on as a client and it also allows you to discover whether you want to do with us and if at some point we decide to part company then we do that diplomatically and graciously to each other and the worst thing that's happened is we've met a new friend uh, in the second meeting we reiterate that again so the first two meetings are at our cost if you decide to proceed from that point you know exactly the value that we're going to add to your situation and you know the fees so there's really no harm in introducing your friends and family to us because if they decide to exit that's their choice and we won't be telling you about that we'll be thanking you that you've introduced them but that's mm. it do you do you brian that thank you for that one one thing i know what we work with in our firm quite a lot and and you know we, we're constantly struggling to reinvent the wheel and think about things but you know client events creating things where our clients can 
um, or would want their friends to come to that we would would host. Do you do, do you do any of that sort of stuff? Uh, we've talked about that for maybe five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, we would like to, uh, and we've worked out all various machinations of that. Um, to be honest, it's probably up to me, and we're just so busy we haven't done it. Um, would clients enjoy it? I'm sure they would. Uh, is there all sorts of ways that that can work? Absolutely. Uh, would we like to do it? Yes. Yeah. Will we do it? Probably. <laughs> Look, I suppose if you're getting uh, you know, 80 to 90% of your clients referring without doing the events, obviously you, you, you know, look, looking after them. So it's uh, yes. not critical yeah. and uh, it probably wouldn't do any, any good things for your uh, wait time to, yeah. to see an advisor, which uh, right. Brian mentioned to me just before the call was between six and 12 weeks at the moment. So, uh, so clearly this, this stuff gets results. So, um, so I just just to follow up with the, the process that, that that you use. You mentioned uh, before and, and when we were chatting uh, previously as well about this this sheet that you give for the people, and not many people use that. Are there any other tools that you use apart from just that constant, um, you know, like just re re bringing up and reminding people when you have meetings with them? Yeah. So a couple of things I, I should mention that. On the top of that sheet is a statement that says most of our most of our clients introduce their family and friends to us. Um, we'd like to help your family and friends. So it's without saying it, it's an expectation and assumption because it says most of our clients introduce their family and friends. We've also done up some little business cards that uh, say on it, you've been introduced to Hunter Financial. And it's got our details on the front and our, our statement uh, that we maximise the probability of you achieving your financial destiny and we help you make wise decisions about money. On the back is like a doctor's appointment card with a spots for time and date and so they give that to their friends and say, uh, you can ring these people and make a time. And we find that people ring and say, oh, I've got one of your appointment cards. I just need to note down the date and time. Okay. So yeah, it, kind cool. of feels, it kind of feels like then, you know, what, it, it's, it's quite literally, you know, the obstacles in your head or as an advisor, and if you're consistently asking the questions and, you know, it's, the, it's simply if you don't ask, it's going to stay at zero. But if you do ask consistently, you can get as high as 90. And then it's just giving something that they can give to their, their friends as, and it can just be as simple as an appointment card to say, hey, these, yes. and, that's, and that's, that's kind of it. It feels remarkably simple to the point where I don't get why we aren't better at this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and look, uh, when, when I talk about this at seminars or here in a webinar, um, most people doubt our numbers. Most people go, really? Um, that can't be right. Um, I'm telling you it is. And it's a wonderful way to do business because they're, they're warm referrals uh, yeah. or the term that we use, introductions. Uh, you know, re recently we had a, um, an accounting firm, which is one of the big four, uh, introduces to a wealthy client and uh, we worked with them on some things uh, since that time we now have the whole family um, brothers sisters mother um, and uh, wonderful clients mm. now they um, said to us um, it's amazing that you've now got the whole family here um, and the accountant said that's because they ask <laughs> um, yeah. and and so um, the accountant was learning by sitting in on all those meetings. And I, I just think um, it's something where if you stick to it um, and do it casually, non-threatening, uh, release people, um, then most people, but obviously you've got to give very good service. If, oh, yeah. if, you're, not, if yeah. you're not giving good service, then uh, it falls down. 
but is, yeah. is there a particular type of advice, Brian, that you see is um, more? It's it's an easier way for for the clients to refer. I'm just thinking from my own experiences, where perhaps I don't ask for referrals, but you know, in our business, our average client sixty five, so we do a lot of um, estate planning and intergenerational wealth. So just by virtue of that, I find myself speaking to a lot of well now ex clients' children, and you know, making sure that this the assets are being passed down in a way that's uh, you know, consistent with their financial planning and through that I'm finding that you know the siblings have become clients and you know so so we, we see a little bit of that but um, it's it's only by virtue of, of the fact that I'm trying to look after my primary clients it's it's, it's like a vicarious referral sure. do you find that estate planning is a is a real strong way for advisors to to earn the right to ask or is it just again you you, you just go for it it's actually in any area Ben it's a good uh, race sorry it's a good question but um, once again, it's in our head. So um, I would challenge you, um, what friends of the plus 65 year olds have you been introduced to? And what friends and family of the uh, children have you been introduced to? Yeah. So if you haven't got introductions from the 40 and 50 year olds into their network, then you're not looking after them. Um, so, our, Part of our DNA is that um, the Australian community is underinsured and not seeing enough people for quality advice. Well, we simply say, um, bring them in. Get them in here because we want to help people. Uh, people need our help and unless you bring them in, you don't want to be the one standing around saying, oh, if only I'd introduce them to Hunter Financial." Yeah. So it, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a heart it's a passion it's you know it drives everything that we do. So to follow up though on that one, Brian, have you found that there's any particular uh, like you know door opener? I suppose that's that makes it easier for an, an introduction, as you say, to to be to you know to to sort of connect with your business do you know like if you get introduced to a person that needs comprehensive financial planning versus someone that just need has an insurance need that you solve or an investment need is there anything that you find is like a like a sweet spot or or on the flip side a, a particular type of advice or need that is more difficult for you to actually uh, convert to a client from that introduction a good question. Um, I don't think so. However, uh, we do set some standards. So, for instance, if um, we, we've got five criteria, um, they must be people like us. They must be people like our other clients. Uh, there must be some complexity where we can add value and not just taking on a client for the sake of it. Uh, if we can't add value, then we won't see them. Uh, they must be willing to pay for advice and they must <clears throat> be willing to introduce family and friends. So if they fit that criteria, and probably the biggest one there is complexity and us adding value, um, then we'll deal with them. <clears throat> so um, thinking about uh, people who, you know, what's the sweet spot and what's our better introduction, I think the fact that the first two appointments are at our cost uh, rather than the word free because um, then, then they acknowledge there is a cost um, and the fact that we openly say um, and it's up to you to decide whether you'll be a client of ours and it's up to us to decide whether we can add value uh, and bring you on as a client. So. You set the criteria and the foundations and they know straight away when they come in. So, for instance, a couple of years back, there was an elderly lady introduced to us and in the second meeting, we said to her, look, you're actually doing a great job. We can't add value. Uh, we'll, it'd be nice to bring you on as a client and charge you a fee, but really, that's not what we're about. We can't add value. You should keep doing what you're doing. If in 12 or 18 months time you want to come back and ask us questions, we're happy for you to come in just to chat about stuff, but we can't add value. She sure. was she was like, oh, this is fantastic. Well, in the next three months, we had all her married children as clients. 
Wow. So it's just that I think that genuineness of adding value and saying to people the first two appointments are at our cost. Yeah. I think that, that's probably one of our keys, I think. Okay. So I, I do have a follow-up for that, but I just saw a question that's come up from, uh, from Lee Smith asking if we could get access to those scripts. Are you, are you able to share? I figured I may as well put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, no, we, we paid a lot of money to work those through, so they're now our own IP. Um, but if you replay uh, this webinar and you're smart enough, you can make up. You can make up seventy percent of the scripts anyway. Um, so did you just you just develop those yourself from you know refining no, we, those? Time, no, we we had a um, external consultant come in and work with us on it, and then we made them our own. So okay. they they assisted, and then we made our own. It's it's uh, it's kind of a nice segue into a question. I was going to throw you a bit of a curveball, Brian. You know, you you got to the point where you've got these scripts that seem to obviously be working nine times out of ten. And you, you know, before that, where where were what were some of the mistakes that perhaps you guys were making, and and you know, you found yourselves not not getting the results. Uh, being too bold, uh, asking for referrals instead of personal introductions. Um, straight away, people go, oh, sales. Um, even though we are in sales. <laughs> um, and uh, the um, script, we, we, we've we refined that and continue to review it uh, to just make sure that it's still genuine, it's us, it's not forced, uh, and it's part of who we are. Yeah. Did you try any um, incentive programs or anything like that where, um, you know, maybe not, not giving them a clip of, of what you're earning for a referral, but just, uh, you know, rewarding clients financially or, or otherwise through, through referrals? Um, I would never offend anybody by doing it. Um, uh, to me, that's um, just terrible. So yeah. I, I know that in years past, we used to do it with accountants and lawyers and give them a referral fee basically. And we had, we actually had referral agreements that were formalized and uh, we declared it on our SOAs that we we're paying XYZ accounting firm, you know, uh, X dollars. Um, but uh, no, we've stopped all of that. We never mention it. It's never asked for. Uh, we don't even go there. Yeah. So Brian, so, uh, and apologies to Lee, I, was, I did do my best there, but um, just with the... With okay, the let, 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 me, let me reiterate. What, what I can do is I can send to you the sheet and a copy of the business cards. Okay. And you, and you can attach it for everybody. That'd be great. So we'll That's post really those fun. up in the, in the Facebook group, post the, post the session for everyone looking in. And thanks for that, Brian. And in, light, and, and in light of the fact that um, we don't offer referral fees, um, I won't ask for a bottle of red or anything like that. <laughs> well, we love, we love giving gifts, so you might be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's very um, kind. Thank, thank you, Brian. So, Brian, what, what do you find, though, like, so you're getting all these different referrals, different types of, of people, but what do you find is the, um, like, the main sort of business that, that you're doing with these referrals? Like, cause you're saying you do holistic, you know, comprehensive planning and, and strategy work, but you know, what does it actually look like for the, for the people that you get in versus, you know, insurance only versus super versus comprehensive uh, from the referral side? Uh, we would hardly do any risk only these days. Um, it's usually not worth it for us because um, the clients don't want to go into a um, fee-for-service model. They simply want a transaction. And we say, look, um, there are lots of places that you can go and get that transaction organised. Uh, we want to deal with you. We want to deal with your spouse. We want to deal with your business partners. We want to look after every aspect of your uh, financial life. And uh, if you're not prepared for us to do that, then it's probably not the right fit. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a, that's amazing. Because I, I wasn't sure. I know it's you know sometimes it's 
that people talk about referrals and with insurance it's a probably an easier conversation especially if people have already got that cover but to get those numbers with doing you know the overall strategy stuff i think is amazing that, that um, opens up something i was thinking brian um you know is there, is there perhaps thinking for younger advisors you know taking taking uh, into you know you've got an established business and perhaps that affords some flexibility with who you work with sure. but is that you know if you're a young advisor who's starting out a bit like you, you'd be screaming for any bit of business you can get to, to get yourself started is it perhaps you know would your advice then be to young people starting out to um, you know be really mindful and not not chase the quick money but you know to to remain firm around saying no to business yeah look within within reason uh, you can't, you can't have every week go by without writing business um, because you've decided that you're only going to deal with people with blue suits and pink hair um, because that's your niche. Um, you go broke real quick. Um, so within reason, yes, but you must know what it is that you want. So unless you've set some agenda and criteria, around where you want to work, um, then how, how do you know? So if you're hunting bears, you don't know what a bear looks like, um, you're not gonna find them. So decide what your bear is going to be within your business and go looking for them. Uh, in the meantime, if a lion or a cub or someone comes along and wants to do business with you, then sure. And maybe you might even say to them, you know what, I actually don't normally uh, do with uh, your situation, but I'm happy to help you out on this occasion. Sure. Rather than begging, oh, please, please come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's, uh, that's just very important for, to make sure that you're positioning yourself for, that, for the, the valuable service that you provide, right? So. Uh, cool. So I've so I just saw a question come up from Ezra, and it sort of ties in with one of the questions that I was going to ask. So I'll, I'll ask you them sort of both. Uh, Ezra talks about you know the, the need for activity, um, but uh, to to drive this. But then ask you know with when you're uh, talking to your clients about these introductions, do you need to coach or guide them about how to how the introduction uh, process should work? Uh, or, how, or what they should do and then leading into what I w wanted to ask was that you know what, do you, what have you found is the best, best way for getting a referral so if I'm your client and you have that conversation with me and I say okay yeah that's great Brian I love your work um, I know a guy uh, I, want, I want to introduce him what do you do what do you do from there and what have you found is there anything that works better than, than others? Um, so we used to uh, try and control that straight away uh, what we do now is I would say, Ben, how, how would you normally go about that? If you were referring them to your BMW dealership um, and a great mate of yours that sells cars, how would you normally go about that? If you're referring them to your doctor or your dentist or just telling people, I want to introduce you to my GP because he's great, how would you go about that? So we ask them. They then come back and say, oh, I'd normally do this. Well, that works for us. Um, why don't you give it a try and let us know how you go. And then we'd follow them up and say, hey, Ben, how'd you go? Um, so we, we ask them. If they say, look, um, I don't normally do this, but I'm happy to do it. Um, how can I do it? Then we will give them a little bit of coaching and say, look, we suggest that um, you mentioned to them that we're going to give them a call and then give us their details and we'll do a softly, softly call. But be assured, you will never, ever be embarrassed. Yeah. Okay. And so you, you mentioned that you, you were previously, you were doing it a little differently. What was that? And is there a learning, you know, that, that's come out of that that's, that's got you to change to the, to the approach that you take now? Yeah, it was probably too salesy, Ben. Um, too hard, too firm, too, you know, we expect this from you. Um, you know, if you don't get it to us today, tomorrow will be fine. <laughs> it, was bit, yeah. it was just a bit too, uh, it was too pushy. Um, okay. And so we've backed right off. 
Sorry, so, Ben. I, I, it's oh, still, sorry. sorry, Brian. It's, I, I cut you off. Go still, on, Mark, yeah, that's right. But it's still in every meeting. So although we've backed off and it's softer in terms of language and approach, it's still there in every meeting. Yeah, sure. And so with so with the you know you mentioned that when uh, if someone asks you, then you can give them some insights or some tips or something. What do you what do you say in what are the what's the sort of the insight that you give them? Um, so it'll be something like uh, Ben, if you were going to uh, talk to Ray uh, about us. Would you normally do that over a beer on a Friday night or would you do it over the phone or email? How would you normally communicate with him about that? So whatever the person says, let's say it's email, uh, we say, well, look, um, why don't you shoot them an email and copy me in, here's my card, copy me into that and then I'll just follow them up and I'll let you know how we go. Okay, so yeah. It's, 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 making sure that it's always in their language and their format and how they're comfortable with it um and it just you 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 are prompting them and helping them but you're not necessarily coming in like a control freak that i used to be <laughs> yeah sure no that that makes sense uh, so look, I've got one last question just before we, we open it up to questions from the guys watching in. And for, for anyone that's watching, if you've got any questions that, or things that you'd like to ask Brian, you could just type them in the chat box there uh, and we'll come to them in a sec. Uh, so my question is, uh, I don't know if you, if you look into this data at this sort of level, but have you found, like when do people typically refer? Have you found that people tend to refer more at the front end or, you know, as you go through or, uh, you know, all, all throughout? Yeah, good question. Um, we tried to analyze that and we tried to get a bit of a benchmark on it. No idea. Um, some people, um, before they even become clients. So, so they loved the experience of the discovery meeting. Um, and before they even get to signing terms of engagement, I've referred three or four people. Um, it's like, really? Um, and others, 18 months time. So yeah. there's, there's actually no science that we can find in that data. What we do know is because we have it on the agenda all the time and are doing it gently and in a nice uh, language, then people introduce their family and friends. Okay. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't. Matter. It doesn't really matter. I suppose when it, when it happens, as long as, no. as long as it's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So yeah. for those that maybe have have kind of signed in throughout the the webinar, I've put together maybe six six kind of key takeaways. Which um, first of all, when you're asking for referrals, I think the obstacles are, are clearly in, in your head rather than in in the uh, the right to ask. Um, so that that was that was one of the first ones. Um, it's helpful to perhaps give something to your clients to give to their referrals if it's a business card or just something to pass on so they've, they've, they've got all your contact details. Don't be a, too abrupt. Um, it was one of the learnings and that, that falls into the next point which says, you know, it, it needs to be authentic otherwise this stuff's going to feel a bit synthetic, it's not going to work. Um, to, to what Brian was just talking about in their language, in their in their way of communicating it, you're not you, you know don't don't feel like you need to own that process and, and don't don't control it. Um, allow that to happen organically because ultimately they're friends because of the way that they like talking to each other. So don't disrupt that. Just you know, uh, you know fit, fit into to, to whatever that is. Um, and I, I think probably one of the the biggest ones that I'll definitely take out of this is not referrals you're asking for. It's a personal introduction. You know, it's yeah. introducing like you would have one friend to another. You you're not yep. you know the pub referring your mates to each other. It's like you, yeah. you're just getting together and you know you, you you've got a sense that these guys like each other. So you know, catch up and yeah. shoot the brain. Yep. Very good. Cool. So I got a question from from Lee uh, asking about how many new clients you take on per whatever period uh, following this referral type strategy? Yeah, good question, Lee. We aim for 30 a month um, and we probably hit 
uh, 15 to 20 every month and every now and then we hit 30. Wow. But that's why we've got capacity issues. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a big numbers. So, okay, and so a related question from, from, a, from another Ray, uh, talking about, you know, when you're onboarding clients, do you look at their, their lifetime value or the, the metrics around that and does that drive any of the, you know, your approach? Uh, just to explain from a question uh, what they mean by lifetime value. Like in so terms the, of... So I the lifetime like, value of a client? Yeah, so I'm your, I'm your client, but then I, you know, you figured out that I'm going to refer you for other people on average and then they they generate revenue for the business. Uh, okay. Sort of, yeah. yeah, no, no, never. It's uh, the implied future value of that client um, uh, will grow with us, but never about the potential of them to refer. So, for instance, if you dealt with accountants and were really looking after the accountant and spending coffee with them once a month based on the fact that you were going to get a lot of referrals, you've just wasted a lot of time and money because it ain't going to happen in my experience. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's probably a good lead into the question that I've got uh, from Dylan, and uh, I'm not sure that uh, the response is, is going to going to help him <laughs> after that. But uh, he's asking about what's the what's the got like? Can you provide any guidance or an effective way to help and educate potential referral partners, like your accountants, solicitors, brokers, to better recognise a, a a person that would be you would want an introduction with, or um, to be better at those conversations. Yeah, look, Dylan, it's a it's a good question, and I've struggled this for years. Um, we have a relationship with um, one of the senior partners in a very large, uh, one of the big four accounting firms here in Newcastle. They have a massive financial planning practice, both in Sydney and Melbourne. And they don't refer to it because Novocastrians, for some reason or other, like to deal with people in Newcastle. Uh, so we've developed this relationship with this partner. And every now and then, uh, he introduces us to wealthy people. <clears throat> we've only ever said to him, <clears throat> pardon me, we've only ever said to him, um, we want to help your clients. You're keen to care for your clients. That's your nature. Uh, we care for them as well. Um, if there's an area that we can assist that you can't, then please give us a call. Um, that's really it. Uh, the, the, our own uh, personal accountants for the business and our private, uh, they refer. Um, but even, even them... You know, they, they struggle. Um, the solicitors, uh, every now and then. Uh, mortgage brokers, yeah, a bit. Um, what we find is all of those people are so busy, uh, particularly with compliance and new business regulations. Um, we're, we're not top of mind. We've, at times, we've run training sessions for accountants once a month. We'll go in and give their whole team a training session on something uh we'll give them a, a checklist that they can go through with clients you know do you have life insurance do you have income protection da, 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 uh, so that they can then say to the client well look uh we're going to introduce you to someone to look after this um a lot of hard work for a very very little return so we just decided to concentrate on our own clients okay so sorry sorry <laughs> I figured the response might have uh, might have went that way. So, uh, so what? So yeah. So did you? Yeah. I suppose it, it was the issue that they didn't have time and, and didn't refer because it sounds like you're already doing some of those education type activities. Would you say? Yeah. Look, uh, I think that they just one they don't know how. It's not in their nature, and no matter how much you try and educate them. They're just not good at it. Um, if you've got 
got a great relationship with a couple of those people, then it's more likely to happen. Uh, but if you're, you know, jumping on the bandwagon with everybody else, trying to look after some of their clients, uh, we've also said to people, look, in our database, they're tagged as your client. So don't worry, we're, ne we're never going to cross-sell them to anybody. Uh, sure, that's, that's a comfort thing, and so that sometimes helps. Yeah, no, that that makes that makes sense, and I know that, like you know, that's something that I've found with with from my experience as well. That it's 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 always challenging working with those other professionals. Plus, it's a very saturated space as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it in a second, but I I'd just like to ask you one final question. So for uh, for the people watching in i think it would be hard to not uh you know identify this enormous opportunity that exists within all of our businesses uh so if i want to get started what should i do what do you think what's the best next step for me to take start just start <laughs> um look um look i i have i have a commercial proposition where uh People can book me for a half day to lead their whole team uh, through this. But to be honest, I think just start. Um, start using the right language, start using the words, start to build some scripts, trial it. Um, we, uh, in the early days, we would say to people, um, we need your help. I, I think there's some of the best four words in the English language. I need your help. Um, I've never come across anybody who's turned around and told me to pee off. Um, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> um, most people want to help. I do it at airline counters. I do it at um, restaurants. I need your help. And people go, sure. Um, same with clients. I need your help. Um, Brian, what, what do you need me to help you with? Well, you know, if, if I don't build my business, then I'm not going to be around to be able to look after you and service you and your family. Um, I'd love to do with people like you. Can you help me find some? You make it sound so easy. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's, that's why I've got no hair and, and it's this colour. Um, it, it's taken time. Yeah. No, that is fantastic. Uh, so just, and I think like we tell a lot of our clients, you know, the best way to start is to take that, take action and uh, yeah. build up from there. Uh, some fantastic tips. So thank you very much for sharing. It's been My great to be, uh, hitting you up for those, uh, those couple of uh, yes. the sheets that you use and, and well, sharing. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> we won't need the, we won't need the <laughs> Uh, but no, thank you very much. It's, it's been great. I think, uh, like I said at the start, you know, it's, it's so easy to get caught up, you know, doing all the, the fancy stuff, but, you know, the, it's, uh, the foundations are, are so critical. So, uh, yeah, no, really appreciate you sharing. Um, My pleasure. Ben, ben, if I can just say yes. in relation to your question about starting, can I encourage people just to set a target of one new personal introduction per week? Or fortnight whatever they're comfortable with and then gradually increase that and build it up to 10 a month um, the the uh, wealth that you build in your business by doing that and therefore not relying on one person or two advisors because the business is growing organically without an individual being the key focus is enormous um, and if you do the exponential numbers of one a week or one a month, and then next year it's two a week or two a month, and the year after that it's five, uh, the growth in each individual business is astronomical. Yeah, definitely. No, it's a, clearly a massive opportunity. And I think that's uh, it's good advice. I take it back again to, you know, what we do with our clients, start small, build on it, and yeah. uh, and then you get the... the yeah. You know, just grows over time. So, and it's it's a fun way to do business. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, for everyone watching in, we've got uh, next week, we've got MJ Fitzpatrick, who I heard speak at an event recently in Sydney. Uh, absolutely amazing with his uh, com communications. We've got the link up there to, to register and uh, just noting that we will also uh, post those, uh, the, the collateral that uh, Brian's going to share with us into the Facebook group. So if you're not already in there, you should definitely do it because there's some amazing conversations happening in there as well. Uh, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you again, Brian. It's been, it's pleasure. been a, a pleasure uh, and we'll see you soon. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Brian. See you, Ben. Thanks, everyone. Bye.